What's up everybody, my name is Osiris and today I want to talk about the A7R5 and specifically its video capabilities. Now I'm not going to lie, there's plenty of videos out there, but I made this because I wasn't seeing something I wanted to see. I wanted to see more samples with actual uh, lenses that had built-in stabilization to see how that new sensor paired with a lens that had stabilization and I wanted to check more dynamic range samples and I wanted to actually see how it compares to the FX9 that is my main camera so I'm curious to see if it would be a great B camera pairing so in this video I'm going to show you actual footage of shoots I've been in and some footage on my own that I, I played around with and you're going to see differences and uh, some pleasant surprises uh, in the footage ahead so here's the video enjoy so I wanted to do a practical dynamic test and here's my daughter helping me out. I chose a difficult lighting situation. She's backlit, she's in the shade. So I figured this would be a good way to test the dynamic range. Here's the A7R5 and the A7 IV. Now oddly enough, I had them exactly the same ISO, f-stop, shutter, and the A7 IV looks a little darker. As you see here, the A7R5 is definitely brighter in the shadows. I'm gonna increase the exposure of the A7IV now to match the A7R5. So what you're gonna look at now is pretty much matching, and you'll see what I mean about the shadow color. A7IV, notice it's almost slightly warmer and brighter in the shadow. So this is my little non-scientific dynamic range test. I could definitely see a small change and difference in a positive way in this new camera. So most of the videos I saw out there were testing out the camera with non-stabilized lens. So I wanted to actually see the benefit of having a stabilized lens merge with this new sensor of eight stops built in. So I got the 28 to 135 f4 Sony lens and took it for a spin. Here are the results. Here I am, I am walking at 28 uh, millimeters. There has been no stabilization added in post. This is straight out of camera. And honestly, it looks amazing. This is me at about 70 millimeters. And we're just kind of walking and talking. Here's another shot about 70, 80 millimeters uh, zoomed in. And we're just walking. I'm here filming one of my best friends, John, who's also another filmmaker. If you ever want to check out his channel, it's in Spanish. I'm going to put links in the description box below. I was kind of moving side to side a little bit, giving a little motion. So if you're someone that likes to shoot this style, not running or anything crazy, your shots will be super, super steady with a stabilized lens and the A7R5 paired. Coming up next is a job I had for a principal giveaway and uh it was very fun a lot of motion excitement i was running around so pretty much worst case scenario i'm doing a lot of zoom ins and outs to get some type of dynamic motion i, th I think it came out great again this is all unstabilized looking for the shot framing it up a little zoom in give it some motion some life did a great job the next clip the next clip coming up is going to be wild these are shots that I did on a Ronin, okay, which don't count, but I feel like it looks extra smooth here. And again, these are not stabilized. Again, these are Ronin shots, these last couple. Coming up next is a running around shot. Here we go. I'm running through a crowd. I'm zooming out, zooming in. This is worst case scenario. It's not the best. So obviously form is important, but I wanted to use this as a test and as a separate test. What I did was I, I saved his face on the new AI autofocus feature to lock on to him only. So this is the result. Let's go back. This is 300% zoomed in and that focus is locked on to him in a pretty much worst case scenario. So big kudos to the AI. So can we replace a Ronin? Well, I want to do a cool little product shots. Uh, and see how it would look. So again, I use my 28 to 135, crash zooming, parallaxing, 
Uh, and again, this is real world usage. If you have a, a job where you have to highlight a product, I figured this makes a lot of sense and the footage looked very smooth. Now I have the a7 IV in contrast. Here we go. And it's still pretty good, but you notice it still has a little bit of odd movement. And check this test out. Coming up, I pretty much put it on 135 millimeter and I tried to hold it as still as possible. This is the a7 IV pretty rough and then coming up now boom a7 r5 out of control this is crazy this is this is crazy look how good that looks so my main camera is the fx9 so how does this pair this is a nice shot i did for a client with the fx9 s log 3 And boom, there is the A7R5. And I gotta say, this pairs better than the A7S3. I have not touched anything on these files. I just dropped the LUT, the same LUT applied on both. And the color, the blue hue, the skin tone, this matches better than my A7S3. So something that's gonna be different from my channel from others, I'm gonna to speak to you directly as a business owner and somebody that is working in the field. And that I think is a positive compared to some YouTubers that are more content creators or they just create videos and do gear reviews, but they've never used this gear on professional jobs. So there are some, there are some nuances and differences when you're working on these professional job sites and, and having that experience and applying that to gear purchase and real, real world usage for this gear. Do you need the A7R5? The answer is no, but my God, is it a joy to use? Stabilization is on point and improved. Autofocus AI definitely has some benefits. The freaking EVF man, stunning. I love using it. The EVF is just gorgeous. It's bright. It's crisp. And can we just talk about the flippy screen for a second? I mean, thank you, Sony. Thank you. If, now look, Years. flipping the screen out is great. It's not just for vlogging. I've used it when the camera is hanging upside down. You could see the screen from any angle. But having the ability to bring it in and tie it to the body I love it. I love it for from for a photography standpoint. I love it from putting it on the gimbal standpoint. It's just really nice to have the flexibility to do whatever you want when in different shooting situations. As far as video goes, obviously the stabilization is awesome. It's not like the perfect stabilization. You're not going to get rid of your gimbal, but for sure it is improved and it definitely I can see the difference. I could actually see the difference between cameras, which is super nice because half the time you can't see much of a difference. It's pix pixel peeping, you know, but in this regard, it did make a difference. I did see some dynamic range increase. So I, I love it. And I think it pairs really nice with my FX9. So right now I'm very happy with this purchase. It's pretty much all I ever wanted for photography for my commercial needs. Do I need 60 megapixels? No, but I have clients that are commercial clients and they want large pictures and it's just always nice to put high resolution 60 megapixels the client likes it they think they need it most people don't need it but some clients are demanding that so as far as for photography goes all the little perks inside definitely worth it if you're doing professional work and you're getting paid for these jobs this is a tool that helps it helps you do your job a little easier and it just gives you that freedom, that real estate to crop in. As far as the video side, nobody needs 8K. I'll, I won't use this for 8K. I just, I want 4K. That's, that's all I need. If you're just starting off, this is probably overkill. And you could probably go with the A7 IV and be very happy. And of course, there's a bunch of different options now uh, for like the FX30, which is more video centric. If you're a hybrid shooter, uh, I would say a7 IV all day. I mean, you can't go wrong with the a7 IV starting off as a hybrid shooter. And if you're just a pure video shooter, 
the ZV-1, even though it's overheating, it's good for vlogging and just kind of getting your feet wet. Then you have the FX-30, which is the baby FX-3. That's for, that's for professional work. It doesn't matter if it's Super 35, you could do professional work on that. Then you have your FX-3 A7S-3, that when you're getting paid work, you want the best. If you're getting paid, do, do right by your clients and level up. Level up your gear, gear does matter. In the eyes of the client, it matters. In the small nuances that your work produces, it matters. And again, there's levels, right? Well, this will be for another video. There's levels to this. Every couple years and every job that you get, you're pushing to, to grow, push your, your creativity, push and grow your portfolio so you could level up, get better paying jobs. You're going to be showing up to these jobs. You know, the higher level the job is, you're showing up with more and more gear, just a natural... Uh, progression you know the job calls for you to have certain equipment on site so a7r5 i love it i recommend it a hundred percent to my professional working uh creators it is probably the perfect hybrid camera for the hybrid shooter again this channel is to help the viewers learn about photo and video and how this gear could apply to you and your business so thanks for stopping by guys hope you love the video and catch you in the next one Thank you.